I understand when two people have an issue and they both make police charges that it has to be fully investigated. I understand this. But when one party is throwing themselves into a shower, turning on the hot water, stepping into that shower completely dressed, burning themselves alive, that their mental sanity would come into question. When they are pulling their own hair out, chunks at a time, leaving bald spots on their head, their mental health would come into question. When they say they hear voices in their heads and they are screaming, make the voices stop, their mental state should come into question. When they run off accusing somebody of rape when it never happened, their mental sanity should come into question. When the police do not even make an official charge on this rape bullshit, her mental sanity should come into question. When she has a history of doing this to other men, her mental sanity should come into question. When they write on your wall on the 29th, I will never leave you and sign your, their name to it. Then, four days later, push a man down the staircase and take off running, her mental sanity should come into question. When she says, in full detail, in her own diary, that she is speaking to demons and that demons controlled her and made her do certain behaviors, her mental sanity should come into question. When she leaves a full confession letter, mentioning everything she's ever done and that she's sorry for what she's did, her mental sanity should come into question. When she accuses somebody eight different times and makes that person go to court eight different times, and every time the man is acquitted and called not guilty, her mental sanity should come into question. When she leaves somebody for dead after she pushes him down the staircase for four days while he's in a coma, using his body for sex and waking him up out of his coma, out of his pain-induced coma that he's in, just to push her off, her mental sanity should come into question. When she refuses to get the person help for four days while he lays in a medical in a coma from being pushed down the staircase, her mental sanity should come into question. When she draws pictures of a woman crying, and on top of it it says, I don't know why I drew this picture, can you please help me? And hands it to the other guy, and the guy looks at her going, what the fuck? Her mental sanity should come into question. When she is lying about who she is, her mental sanity should come into question. Now, with all these things that should have come into question, not one of them came into question. Not one. Every bit of evidence I handed over to the cops got completely ignored. Not only ignored by the cops, but during her testimony also when she was going in for suspect hearing. Not one of the major issues was mentioned. There was nothing mentioned of, did you pull your hair out? Did you set yourself on fire? Did you burn yourself in the shower? Did you bite your ex-boyfriend? Did you kick your dog in the face? <laughs> you know, none of these things came into question. Were you really talking to demons? None of this stuff ever came up. Despite it being proven through her own diary, where she actually signs her name like a total narcissist on every page, with the date and her name, because she's such a fucking narcissist, she wants everybody to know what, what's written there is uh, spoken by her, as if it's some kind of divine words. <laughs> so despite all of this stuff, she's never come into question. She still has the benefit of the doubt. Can you believe that? Now imagine if a man came in, so mentally fucked up, as I just mentioned just now and all those things that should have come up into question, do you think the man would ever stand a tiny chance in hell of having the benefit of the doubt? Of course not. He would be thrown up in a he'd be thrown in a ward. Locked away in prison. <laughs> Guilty, throw him away. Right? So despite the man spending three years going to courts, facing legal battles, proving his innocence, he still doesn't have what they call the benefit of the doubt. So even though her story changes every week to fit her new mood, her mental sanity never comes into question. Why is this, folks? 
Why is it when you actually have a woman who commit, uh, commits, almost commits murder, then admits to almost committing murder, how come she can get away scot-free like that? Isn't that a very good question to ask when you think about it? Because I have everything. I have the full testimony. I have everything to hang her. Even a fucking monkey, a chimp, knows she's guilty. But the legal system is doing everything they possibly can to avoid prosecution. They're not saying she's not guilty. They're not saying she shouldn't go to jail. But they are trying to avoid to prosecute her. Why is this? Could you imagine if a man did that? <laughs> he would never be able to get away scot free. Never. So why is a female? Anyways, that's today's video. I just had to vent that out because it's been really getting on my nerves lately. That we have a woman here who's confessed to trying to kill her ex-boyfriend. <laughs> who's confessed to run away. Who has confessed to doing everything the boyfriend has claimed she has done. Who has evidence photos of her behavior. Who has videotapes of her behavior. Yet she still gets away with it. Why is this, folks? Somebody explain it to me why. And not a simpleton answer either, like, women get away with everything, blah, 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 blah. No, a serious answer, please. <laughs> I'd like to hear from lawyers out there, from men out there who've allowed this system to come into place. I'd like to know how they sleep at night. So go on, guys. Tell me how the lawyers nowadays who've actually helped the feminists change the legal system in such a bullshit manner that a woman does no wrong, how they sleep at night. I'd like to hear from some lawyers out there who think that the way that the system is today is totally fine. See you all later. Bye.